you, you often see pictures of polar bears looking like this. They're lying on the ice or lying on rocks and sort of spread out. And they look very relaxed and chilled, and, but they're actually doing something which is important to actually save their lives. Their fur is so good that even in the coldest extremes, polar bears can actually overheat. The insulation is that good. So they flat them, flatten themselves out on the ice to make sure they don't overheat. A polar bear is an animal that can be both cold and overheating and sweating all at the same time. That's exactly like a DBA or a developer. The moment after they've done something catastrophic to their database, like drop a table or delete some data, you're both cold and sweating at the same time, which leads us nicely into flashback database. Sometimes we mess up a transaction and we get it back with flashback transaction. Sometimes we mess up a whole table and we get it back with flashback table. But what happens if we just hose our entire database? Sometimes we're doing an application rollout. We've changed a hundred tables. We've deleted thousands of rows that are created, all sorts of stuff. And then we realize that this was a mistake. Flashback database is the technology that lets us solve this problem. It's pretty simple. You simply do alter database flashback on, and that changes the database to now allow the ability to flash it back or rewind it to a point in time. How does it work? This is how a database normally works. You make changes to data and those changed blocks get written out to disk by the database writer. The redo to allow you to roll forward to any version of those blocks is stored in the redo logs. So we have versions of the data stored in blocks, DB writer. We have the ability to roll forward any one of those changes forwards using redo data. So to go backwards, we need something new. And that's, we use this thing called the flashback database archive. It's another background process and it writes old blocks to disk. Once that's in place, the actual command to take a database back to any point in time is fairly simple. It's flashback database to 2.05 PM. As you can imagine, your database is down while this operation is going on. If you don't know a particular time, one of the nice things you can do is nominate points in time using a thing called a restore point. So if it's two in the afternoon, I can say, yep, I'm halfway through my application rollout. I'm happy with where I'm at. I'll create a restore point called I'm okay so far. If something goes south after that point in time, I can simply say flash the database back to that point in time so far. So the big question is, what does it cost? What does it cost in terms of your resource? What are the overheads? You can actually get a nice accurate measure of that using a thing called V$ flashback database stat. That's a facility that gives you for a particular point, a uh, particular set of time intervals, how much flashback data you are consuming, how many logs you're writing, and you can compare it against the redo data. One of the cool things about flashback database is it's all about database blocks. Res redo must capture every single change you ever do because we need to be able to roll it forward in the database recovery. Flashback database can actually do a little bit of some optimizations. To give you an example, if I update the employee table, which is a single block table, 28,000 times, just over and over again, just different rows in that one block table. I used up about nine and a half megabytes of redo, but I only used about a third of that in terms of flashback logs because I didn't actually change many blocks. I just changed the one block in this case. It's quite efficient as to what it actually needs to hold on to. What if I change a table called Big Amp, which is millions and millions of rows? Now, I'm still only changing one row at a time, 28,000 times. So the volume of data being changed is the same, 28,000 single row updates. But because those rows are scattered across different blocks, you can see the amount of flashback logs is about comparable to the actual redo logs. You're gonna sit somewhere between that typically, somewhere between about say 30% to 100% of your redo current size will be the same as your flashback log size. That's a nice easy way of roughly getting a measurement as to where you're gonna be. A good compromise, is rather than turning on flashback across your entire database, which means you can flash back to any point in time ever, is a thing called a guaranteed restore point. Flashback doesn't have to be on at the database level. You can just do create guaranteed restore point, give it a name. And what we're saying there is, I know guaranteed sounds almost more forceful than a normal restore point, but all a guaranteed restore point is saying is the database will guarantee to you that it will be able to flash back to that point, not necessarily to any other point in time from that point onwards, just to that point. As a result, it doesn't need to perhaps maintain as many flashback logs and as much information. So it's a less aggressive sort of resource penalty on your system. Why is flashback database something that really appeals to me, especially as, as a DBA, is that if you got my new application, at nine o'clock, I've done some, DM, some DDL, I've altered the table, I've done all sorts of things. And then at 9.40, halfway through my rollout, the proverbial hits the fan. 
normally you'd have to have this big suite of backout scripts or restore your 10 terabyte database from backup, both of which are very unappealing options. But I simply do flashback database to nine o'clock. I don't have to have flashback logging on all the time for my database. Just before 9 a.m., I would do create a guaranteed restore point saying I'm about to do an implementation. Do that, 9.45, it's all gone pear-shaped. I can just flash back to that guaranteed restore point. If I was a DBA, I would be looking at using guaranteed restore points for every time I ever was doing an application rollout. One of the hidden examples that we use ourselves, we use flashback database in our own technology, is if you've got a data guard standby database, a lot of people are unaware you can open a standby database in read-write mode. You can actually do what's called a convert it to a snapshot standby. And what that does is actually open the database read-write and break its link with the primary. You might be thinking, well, that's a problem because how do I get it back in sync? At 11.30 p.m., I can do what's called a revert to physical. That will actually flash the database back to 5 a.m. and then hook it up with the primary again and then continue rolling forward. So it's nice you have getting a lot of leverage out of your um, standby database. You can actually open it read-write during the day for people to use, do reporting on, do some examining, you know, test application rollouts on. And when you're done, revert it back to physical and sync it up with the primary again without having to recopy all the data files. You need to be careful with your archive logs when using flashback database. As I said, the flashback logs can be quite efficient. If you don't have archive logs around the point in time you need to flashback to, you might get this error. Flashback database not started, required leader logs not there. Let's explain why that is the case. Let's say at 9 a.m. I did a delete. Or in fact, I'm doing all sorts of stuff on my database. And as my app transactions continue on, at regular intervals, I'm writing out these things called flashback logs. And as I said, they're not as, I'm not writing them out as regularly as I am redo logs. So I'm only writing them out you know, at regular points in time. I'm trying to keep it as small and efficient as possible. This is all being done by the database. The question then is if I'm only writing these flashback blocks out at regular intervals, what happens when I say I need to flashback to 9.32 a.m., which is not precisely at a point at which I had some flashback blocks available to me? This is what we do. We go back to a copy of the employee data, for example, or in database data just before 9.32, the most recent one before 9.32, and take the database back to that. So now the database is at, say, 9.30. Now you might be thinking, well, that's not what I requested. I wanted 9.32, but we already have a technology to go from 9.30 to 9.32. We've had it forever. That's recovery. That's database recovery. So what we do is when you say flashback to 9.32, we might go back to say 9.30 and then use redo to actually roll the database forward to your nominated flashback point. That's why you need both your flashback logs and your archive logs around the point in time at which you want to flash back to. A lot of people don't realize that and they often keep their flashback logs, delete the archive logs, and then get themselves in a bit of a quandary. My gut feel is generally if I've got 30 minutes worth of archives, that, uh, that's generally always been enough for me in terms of getting the database back. So be aware of that.